Dean, when you look at the, I guess, you know, what asset class would move the most on the back of either a deal or no deal, what is it away from pound? Is it gilts or actually is it the stock market? I mean, I, I, I think, you know, our first mover would be the pound. On the gilt side of things, I think there's an asymmetry in terms of, you know, rates moving up on a, on a soft Brexit versus rates rallying on a hard Brexit. Um, equity market, I don't have a view. Okay. Uh, well, I think it's it's probably sterling together with with the equity market because uh, especially FTSE 100, we seem to be having a negative correlation because FTSE 100 companies are very much internationally exposed, which means that whenever the sterling goes down, you get a FTSE 100 uh, uh, rallying. But uh, let, let me say, I think it, it's an extremely messy situation, the one that we are in, because no decision is um, easy right now. I mean, if we if we are in a gridlock, uh, the how we move from there, the path uh, are going to be completely uh, obscure. For example, it's not easy to get a second referendum. You would need an extension to get an extension and get an approval from the EU because you were not able to get everything in place before the 30th of March. Mm. Uh, and um, I you mean, know, getting an extension from the EU seems the least of their worries, right? Well, yeah, but I'll tell you, if if the if if the EU is to grant an extension, they'll probably want to know what the question is going to be in the referendum. So therefore, you're going into this uh, issue as to exactly how the question needs to be framed. And I think, you know, what, yeah. what really worries me is that if we keep on kicking the can down the road, we keep on eroding confidence, we keep on yeah. eroding business uh, incentives. 